What's going on, guys? I'm Tyler, and to continue my Studio Ghibli series, I'm here to let you know that Ocean Waves is by no means no perfect movie, but if you've heard of the film, you, that might not surprise you if I say that. If you haven't seen it, haven't heard of it, but you are a Studio Ghibli fan, this might actually throw you for a little bit of a loop. Ocean Waves is about a young man in high school who finds himself infatuated with the new girl in his class. She gets good grades, she's athletic, but she also has a really complicated home life that he witnesses firsthand. And over the course of the movie, he struggles to really understand what she's going through and why she can be a destructive, stubborn person, while also acknowledging that his best friend is also in love with this girl, too. Now, this was actually made as an hour and 12 TV movie by younger Studio Ghibli staff members in their 20s and 30s to basically show that they had what it takes to continue the studio's legacy. The main motto was to make this film cheap, quick, but with quality. The first film in the studio not to be made by Hayao Miyazaki or Isao Takahata. It went behind schedule. It went over budget. The director allegedly got peptic ulcer disease from the stress resulting from the production. And for all those reasons, I want to be nicer towards this movie, but I gotta be honest. I used to think that Pompoko was the worst Studio Ghibli movie that I've ever seen because it took such a cool concept and made it boring and so reliant on narration and exposition as opposed to the characters interacting with each other and interacting with this world that they're supposedly against. So for a while, I thought that was as bad as you could get. But with Ocean Waves, there wasn't really that much significance towards it to begin with because it's a TV movie. It's incredibly limited with what kind of story you can tell and how it's going to how the final product is going to reflect on the studio's legacy. It's a standard romance drama with no fantastical elements, no art house elements like Only Yesterday where present day characters can interact with the past characters and kind of learn from their mistakes and so on and so forth. But I wouldn't really mind with that. I've seen slice of life anime that had no fantastical elements towards it. Kids on the Slope being a prime example. That was a really good show for the first 10 episodes. The last two were kind of stupid, if I'm being honest. But nevertheless, I still tried my best to walk into it with high hopes. But I got to be honest, I've seen TV shows geared towards younger kids that had higher quality animation than this film does. The animation in Ocean Waves isn't necessarily bad, but you do notice the flaws a lot more than the strengths. There were two flaws in particular that I kept noticing, where the characters don't really have a sense of motion. So many of them stay in the exact same position for longer periods of time, where their mouths and once in a while their eyes are the only parts of their bodies that actually move, which could be a way to save on animation. I'm not entirely sure if that was the case. I have seen shows geared towards younger kids that did that, but did it in a way that was that still made the characters, even in the background, feel like they were alive, like they were really part of the scene, not standing around going... Stuff like that got really distracting, but the big distracting point was there were some shots where you could tell the animators didn't have time to draw eyes on certain characters. There's always a couple overhead shots of a location where there are so many people that you can't draw eyes on every single one of them, which I get. So they draw irises and pupils, but no white scleras, which makes it look like they're squinting or that their eyes are closed the entire time. It's sort of a Gilbert Gottfried effect, which again, I'd have no problem with it was if it was just the background shots. But there are medium shots where it's just one character in the frame talking and either they're doing the stupid eye squint thing, or you don't see their eyes whatsoever. They're either not drawn, or they drew hair over it to cover over the fact that they didn't have time to add one small but still key element towards the shot, towards the character. Little details like that do matter in an animated movie, because you're supposed to make it feel as if this character was alive, as if it were real. It is an illusion, but part of the illusion is making us think that this stuff is actually happening, and I didn't get that vibe. And there are so many other minor things that I can nitpick about, like the flashback transitions. Now, imagine the screen as you're watching a movie. So the actual story that's going on is about the size of my phone in the frame. The rest of the frame is just white, just plain white background for no real reason other than cutting costs. They try to make it look stylistic, but 
because it doesn't really tie into the story, the stylistic traits don't really make sense and it becomes incredibly distracting. The nicest thing I can say about the production value is that the symphonic score actually differentiates itself from Joe Hisashi's more orchestral musical works and it stands well on its own. And I wanna give this composer a uh, fair due. Shigeru Nagata. Hopefully I said that right. Hopefully I said that a lot better than I could have. I'm not entirely sure. The majority of people who worked on this movie, I don't think have worked for Studio Ghibli ever since. The director sure as hell hasn't. But the big problem for me personally was the story and character development of Ocean Waves. It is all over the place. The official synopsis of the film is that a love triangle threatens to separate two best friends from each other. Maybe for like one or two scenes in the entire movie, but that's because the best friend, Yukata, the one name I could actually remember from beginning to end, is barely in the movie of all things. There are so many times where I kept forgetting that he was actually a character because it spends so much time on the main character and the girlfriend. And whenever, whenever there are scenes of just the main character and the best friend, Yukata, you'd swear the two of them had romantic feelings about each other because there's so much awkward silence as they're starting to bond and connect with one another. The cinematography frames them in such a romanticized way, like a shot where you only see the two of them from their backs as they're watching the sky and birds fly from a rooftop balcony or from a sea dock over overlooking the ocean. This all sounds romantic, and if it were a forbidden romance story, that would at least be interesting. That would be different from your standard slice of life anime, at least different from the slice of life anime that I've seen. But no, we have this incredibly destructive relationship between this boy and girl that is so confusing and so underdeveloped that I I have real I have a real hard time even describing some of the basic flaws. In fact, I'm going to have to take an edit from this just to look over my notes because Throughout the whole thing, I was really confused as to what the two of them saw in each other and why they would keep coming back to each other without without justifying why they were being such assholes to one another. It's not a Sin and Nancy thing where the codependency actually made sense. Okay, I'm going to give this a try. For starters, the two of them don't really see each other as a couple, but when the girl introduces the boy as her boyfriend to her father, the boy... It's not even surprised. He doesn't even correct anything. He just assumes... He just goes along with it either way. Supposedly, maybe not to upset her or anything like that. Even though she ignores him after what seems to be a one-night stand, when in reality, she just stole his bed from him and goes around saying in school, yeah, I slept with him. She still... She still doesn't want to acknowledge him whatsoever. She says that the... All the guys in this new town that she's forced to live in make her sick, even though you rely on them for, for emotional support. You go to this one boy complaining about how your father doesn't want you in your life, and when you give some constructive stuff on not to be too judgmental to try and to try and make a peaceful make a peaceful solution with the father, or say anything really that this girl doesn't want to hear, she just goes, Oh, what do you know? It's not any of your business. You make no fucking sense whatsoever, and I get it. I get that people who have very dysfunctional families tend to be self-destructive towards other people who don't know their pain, supposedly out of jealousy and envy because those people were a lot more fortunate. The problem is, this girl never really learns her lesson throughout the entire movie, and yet the movie makes it seem through the music, through what the other characters think of her as a person at the end of the movie, and it's just like, Ah, she's learned her lesson. It's okay. Let's get back to dating each other. No! You've given us absolutely nothing to indicate that she has matured or has accepted more responsibility about herself. And as for this boy, I have absolutely no idea what he sees in her other than her grades and her athletics, which are which are a highlight for one or two scenes and one or two scenes only. And those skills in grades and athletics really make you wonder why she is such a hot mess, considering... Oh my god. Wow. Can you see me sweat? This is... I... It's not just because it's hot out, it's just because I have absolutely no idea where to keep going on this, but I am going to focus more on... I don't even know what I'm going to focus on. Oh, right. These two don't even consider themselves a couple, and then they yell at each other for, for gossiping about one another, 
and then they smack each other really hard at school in front of other students. Real complex and tense there, right? But the biggest moment for me, the biggest one that felt so out of place was the ending montage where a character sits down, reflects on the good times that they had. This boy sits down, looks at the sky, and then remembers all the times that she nagged to him about stuff that wasn't his fault, stuff that he couldn't help her with because she wouldn't really tell him the bare essentials of what was going on with her family, why everything was so dysfunctional. And he looks at the sky and goes, what are you reminiscing about? You two were a fucking disaster. I know that this movie is about, about the regrets that you had in your past lives, how the two of them didn't communicate to each other and how it ruined their lives, but... You don't want the kid. This kid doesn't learn his lesson until the last five minutes of the movie. The rest of the 90%, he is an unlikable, stupid douchebag who. Yeah, oh my God. Look, bottom line is you spend 90% of the movie not developing as a character. The audience is going to give up on you very quickly because the two of you are just going to go around in circles. Why should I care if this girl keeps making her problems someone else's who just sucks it up and takes it because he doesn't want to upset her even though she's making really terrible choices and when he does try to give her at least some constructive criticism which is only one or two scenes she backs off and says it's none of your business even though she fucking asked for emotional support for advice to travel by plane to tokyo to visit her father on such short notice even though they're high school kids and the one dad just says, oh, here's some money for the hotel. Have fun. This video wasn't is this video is not going to be as organized as I was hoping it would be. But you know what? Some people do like a random tangent. And I, after after the rant I went on with uh, Funny Girl, where I kept repeating myself, I don't think this is going to bother some people. Nevertheless, Ocean Waves... It was bad. It really is the worst Studio Ghibli movie. The animation is fine, but you notice the flaws more than the strengths. The acting is okay for what it is. The actors do the best with what they can. I watched the Japanese dub. I haven't seen the G-Kids version, and I don't really recommend that you see this movie anyways because the characters are so unlikable, so underdeveloped. You really don't see this girl's home life enough to really understand what kind of turmoil she's in, and because she doesn't explain it to the people in her life that she wants to trust it makes it really hard to root for her to make her to make us want her to mature as a person the only reason we want her to mature as a person is so she would stop nagging and complaining to everyone else and you would want this main kid to grow a brain and realize that if she's not going to take your advice if she's going to keep screwing you over for money so that she can run away to her father why would you accept it if you just don't want to make her upset? Fuck how she feels upset. She's treating you poorly. Oh my god. Ocean Wave sucks. It really sucks. And for all those reasons, I am going to give Ocean Waves a 1.5 out of 5 just for that. Don't watch it on Netflix. It's really not worth your time. I fucking hate this movie. Oh my god. Well, thank you for sitting through that nervous breakdown. Let me know in the comments below if you're one of those fans who thinks that Ocean Waves has gotten better over time because there are people who do feel that way. I haven't read their reviews in, in anticipation for this because I want I wanted to go in as blindly as possible. But if you do like Ocean Waves, let me know in the comments below why. I'm sure there's a couple things that I might have missed. Be sure to let me know what's your least favorite Studio Ghibli movie because everyone's got to have at least one. Like I said... Before this, mine was Pom Poco, and I think that's actually up next on this review list, so look forward to that. Whatever it is, let me know in the comments below. Be sure to stay tuned for more Studio Ghibli reviews, and be sure to like and subscribe. Take care.